To create a new sales item, select Set up another sales item. Otherwise, select an existing sales item to review and make edits to it. Enter a sales item number with a max of six characters that can be a combination of letters and numbers. It is recommended to use a coding system for your items, like in the example you see on screen here. The following settings should always be filled out when creating a new sales item. All of these settings are found in the General Settings tab. Enter a description, which will appear on Reports. Enter a chit description, which will appear on the member's chit and display on the kitchen prep printers. Enter a button description, which will appear on the button in POS. Each button allows for two lines of text, so if you cannot fit the item description onto the first button, you can continue it onto the second button. As a tip, if you put CD in the second button description field and then a number, for example CD10, there will be a countdown function in POS when adding this item. Enter the sales category that this item is linked to. Press F2 on your keyboard to open the lookup list. Enter the selling price for this item. If you are going to be using Jonas Club inventory for this item, enter a $0 amount as the price and the system will automatically pull the price from the inventory module. If you enter 0 as the price, when the server presses the item button in POS, a calculator will appear for them to enter the price at point of sale. Note that if the description starts with an asterisk, the server will not be asked to enter the selling price for a $0 sales item. The next settings are optional and will be useful when creating a new sales item, if they are applicable to you. Preparation Option Menu Codes These are modifiers for an item. Each item can have up to six menus of prep options set up. When the server selects this item in POS, the prep option screen pops up automatically, listing all available prep options. For example, the temperature of meat. If you are using prep options and have set up prep printing overrides, you can choose to not send all preps to all printers. Instead, prep items will only be sent to the override printers you set up. Prep printing override. You can set up prep printing overrides for this item instead of using the prep printing settings associated with the sales category. You can have the item print to different printers based on the sales area. In the additional settings tab, if member discount is flagged, the percentage discount for a member that has been added in the billing section of the setup slash edit member menu screen will be applied to this item. Number of comments to ask for. This is used for a specified number of comments to be included when adding the item in POS. For example, two equals two lines of comments, which can be handy for an open food item. In the special pricing tab, you can set pricing per sales area. This option is useful when you have a single item that is sold at different prices depending on which sales area it is being sold from. Simply enter the pricing for each sales area. Package Revenue This option can be used when you want to offer an all-inclusive price but need the revenues to post to several different GL accounts. For example, you have a Mother's Day brunch for $80 but you want $40 to post to food, $20 to beverages, 10 to taxes, and 10 to gratuity. The key for this procedure is to set the regular price field on the main screen to the full price, including taxes and gratuity. Then, in the package revenue screen here, you can break out the different components and assign them to specific GL accounts. Since package revenue overrides the sales category, you need to specify the GL postings and the taxes that need to be calculated on the item. This setting is usually set up by the controller or food and beverage manager because of the GL postings. The rest of the settings are optional and can be set as needed. Utilize the F1 help for further explanation of the additional fields. Once you are ready to save the new sales item, click OK. If this sales item is no longer sold through POS, you can deactivate the item by flagging the Deactivate Item fields in the General Settings tab and clicking OK to save. A friendly reminder that if you do deactivate items, you'll just want to make sure you remove those items from your menus. To view deactive items on your menus, within the Sales Item Lookup list, click F9 on your keyboard and select the Item List Showing Menus Report. Then click View and decide if you want to see only active items, only deactive items, or both. Then you can utilize this report to help you remove any inactive items from your menus. Thanks for watching, 
Stay tuned for more how-to videos and don't forget to subscribe.